Electric vehicles may soon be surpassed. Toyota has introduced a revolutionary engine. This innovative powertrain promises to be the greenest ever created. A true change in the automotive sector is approaching. Learn about Toyota's advancement, capable of shaking up the electric vehicle market. Chapter 1 Toyota is in the process of developing a revolutionary powertrain. Imagine an engine that is powered by water. This concept bears similarities to fuel cell electric vehicles, SEVs, such as the Toyota Mirai. Additionally, it shares characteristics with hydrogen internal combustion engines, like the recently developed three-cylinder 1.6-liter engine. Historically, the idea of water-based engines has fascinated the automotive industry. They represent a promise of advantages over traditional options and electric cars. Numerous attempts have been made to make this technology practical and reliable for everyday use, but all have been unsuccessful so far. However, Toyota plans to change this scenario with its innovation. Unlike previous efforts, commonly carried out in warehouses with limited resources, Toyota has robust funding. This allows them to extensively test the new engine under various conditions. The operation of this engine is based on a mechanism similar to the HHO generator. However, it has adjustments that make it more suitable for everyday use in vehicles. It closely resembles the hydrogen combustion engine of the Toyota Yaris GRH2. Instead of using pre-processed hydrogen, it performs the separation of hydrogen and oxygen itself, resulting in a chemical reaction. The essence of the process is electrolysis, breaking down H2O molecules. The separation occurs when the electrodes, located in the water reservoir, activate with high voltage. Hydrogen is stored in the water tank, eliminating the need for the heavy and secure containers required for sieves and conventional hydrogen engines, as isolated hydrogen is notoriously challenging to store. The vehicle refueling process begins when the separated hydrogen is sent to the engine. There, it is burned much like compressed natural gas CNG. The fuel injection system and internal engine components need reinforcement because hydrogen is highly flammable, requiring controlled detonation and robust components. The environmental benefits of this engine are significant. It promises virtually zero emissions, comparable to well-known electric vehicles, but with greater convenience. If you have distilled water, you can refuel it at an almost non-existent cost. The widespread adoption of this engine would reduce the need for oil extraction, limiting it only to large machinery or large-scale energy production. It would also eliminate rare metal mining, a harmful process that contaminates waters and soils near the mines. Comparing water engines with sieves and hydrogen combustion engines, both considered zero emission, the former have an advantage. Water storage is simpler and more economical than hydrogen, which requires special conditions and represents a higher environmental and financial cost. Pure hydrogen is a challenge to contain. Any failure can result in leaks, requiring reinforced tanks and constant maintenance. In contrast, a water vehicle's reservoir could theoretically be a simple plastic container. Outside the vehicle, hydrogen requires perfect storage conditions, translating to high costs. Meanwhile, distilled water is available at any supermarket or can be produced at home with basic knowledge of chemistry. Chapter 2 Obtaining pure hydrogen is not a cheap task. Such cost coupled with complications in gas storage, explains why hydrogen has not captured the market, and perhaps it never will. Production and storage require considerable financial resources, raising the final cost for the consumer. This raises questions about the viability of hydrogen vehicles. They are more expensive both to acquire and maintain compared to electric and traditional fossil fuel-powered ones. 
Thus, although theoretically practical and environmentally friendly, the question remains, are they practical in everyday life? The answer is yes. Contrary to some expectations, these engines do not fall short in power. Comparable to gasoline engines, they can even be more powerful. They can generate up to three times more energy than conventional ones. In terms of safety, they also have an advantage since, as they do not store flammable fuel, the risk of fires or explosions decreases significantly. Another favorable point is production. Their design, slightly more complex than gasoline engines, is still simple. They prove to be more accessible for manufacturing than electric or fuel cell electric vehicles, SEVs. This characteristic makes them ideal for developing countries lacking oil resources. An example of this was the initiative of an Iranian scientist. Aladdin Kasimi converted his Peugeot 405 to run on water. The feed turned the vehicle into an exemplar of technological innovation. Pondering on this isolated case raises curiosity about what major manufacturers, such as Toyota, could achieve with appropriate investments. Casimir's Peugeot averaged 30 to 40 miles per gallon of water. Impressive numbers, especially when compared to the performance of the original gasoline engine. This indicates that water engines could achieve over 80 miles per gallon, maintaining efficiency and further reducing operational costs. However, the absence of established models in the market and the lack of interest from major manufacturers in this type of technology raise a question. Will water engines truly be the future of the automotive industry? Chapter 3 Water-Powered Engines – The Future In theory, water-powered engines could represent the evolution of transportation. However, this prospect is not as straightforward as it seems, facing a vast array of challenges. The first challenge relates to logistical barriers. Despite minimal changes being necessary in existing infrastructure, water engine technology is still in the testing phase. Prototypes that promise to be operational have, at best, proven to be moderately reliable for everyday use. Another point of concern is safety. Using water as a source of energy requires separation into hydrogen and oxygen. This process raises serious concerns. As already discussed, hydrogen is notoriously difficult to store. A slight failure could lead to significant risks, including potential fatalities. Let's also consider the scenario where Toyota develops a safe and reliable aquatic vehicle. This does not guarantee its survival in the market. Major lithium corporations, battery manufacturers, and, above all, oil industries could strongly oppose it. The adoption of water as fuel could potentially drastically decrease the demand for fossil fuels and rare minerals such as cobalt and lithium. This would destabilize and could even ruin giant corporations. These companies would undoubtedly have to exert efforts far beyond what has already been happening to prevent the expansion of this technology. And the industry really does not want to see this type of technology evolving. Proof of this is the already famous case of the brothers who, approximately 25 years ago, developed the first fully operational water car. Its creator, Stanley Allen Meyer, and his brother claimed to face constant dangers and threats. Such threats would come from individuals possibly linked to oil companies, which would be harmed by the success of water engines. Meyer received million-dollar offers to destroy his invention and remain silent on the matter. However, he courageously resisted these giants of the oil industry. Once, after a dinner with interested Belgian investors, Meyer abruptly left the venue, clutching his throat. His brother promptly followed. Later, to the press, his brother revealed that Stanley accused one of the men of poisoning him just before his death. Although official records point to a cerebral aneurysm as the cause of death, the truth still sparks debates. Shortly after his tragic death, 
the vehicle and the motor schematics disappeared from his property. To this day, they have not been recovered. Thus, despite the enthusiasm about the possibility of Toyota advancing in this project, we remain uncertain about its realization. And even if the company is committed to this development, it is probably happening in absolute secrecy. Therefore, there are no official confirmations regarding the project at this time.